Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Robberon here again, and this is going to be a guide on to how to play Nobara Kurisaki in Jujutsu Kaisen Cursed Clash. The newest anime game to come out. It's a little bit goofy, a little silly, and does have some problems, but all in all, playing it is actually pretty fun. So as her bio explains, she is a strong mid to long range fighter, where in mid range she's going to be able to throw out a bunch of, well just nails, and put these nails on the opponent. And as you probably know by now, she can put two different types of things on the opponent. She either puts this nail effect, or with her other special, she can put this little doll man looking effect. And both of these can be detonated just by pressing down and the same special button. Down the doll, does decent damage down nail launches the opponent into the air for a hard knockdown and the difference between these two is is that the doll will generally do more damage but will only activate against one opponent so now they've both got dolls and the nail so and if i activate while looking at gojo the doll it'll only activate him and he'll get hit but if i do the nail no matter where i do it or who i'm looking at it'll activate all of the nails you have on any opponent and although she has various strengths this is really where her biggest strength lies. The fact that anytime she lands certain types of attacks, you can kind of set up these like status effects with the nail or the doll from any type of hit. You can get like the doll from other kinds of things like this. You just have this power over the opponent that at any time, if you have like a second, you can pop these. And you can either do it just by the classic Nobara, just like to run away and then just activate them safely. Um, but the ways that I think are more important to activate these is just have them there and either until it's a useful time where you know you can kill them or when you're just looking back and forth seeing if your opponent is dying or getting beat up like Gojo's attacking my teammate then I'll just be like uh, no sir kill him or just at least hit him out of attacking my opponent. I think that's the real strength of where this is because you can activate it from anywhere no matter how far you are. I can be attacking like Megumi over here, we're in a fight, maybe I've just got him into a hard knockdown or something. And then I look all the way over there, you know, none of my attacks will reach. But if I do have a doll or a nail, I can just activate that and blow them both up. And it just really changes the pace of the battle in almost any situation. It's really, really strong. But like I mentioned, there are also kind of like strategic ways to activate them. And for me, the optimal way to maximize the damage from these things and strategically apply them is to have a doll and a nail on each person or a doll or two dolls or an, and whatever else because when you activate the straw doll the opponent doesn't get launched into the air into a hard knockdown they actually just get keep standing they don't get knocked down they don't get blasted away so you can actually do a doll into another doll or a doll into activating the nails and that does a lot of damage so if i just activate a single doll this might kill megumi I did, whoops. Okay, so I've got Gojo here, I do something that guarantees me to get a doll. Now I can either run away or go attack the other opponent, or I can just do something that'll make Gojo restand. Then I go for the nail, I mean the goat doll, and then the nails, and look at that damage you get. Because the doll doesn't blast Gojo away, you can do the doll into the nails, and that's practically a combo. And the amount of damage that that does is ridiculous. And like I mentioned, you can do this either by using multiple dolls or just a doll into nails, as long as you have one doll, because the doll is the thing that doesn't knock the opponent away. But yeah, making sure you abuse this facet of the doll activation is pretty crazy. So see, I even just have no nails and two dolls on Megumi, and I can just activate them both in a row and do some ridiculous damage. Now, although the nails and dolls are extremely powerful, the opponent probably knows that, especially if they've been playing this game for a little bit. So you don't want to be too overtly predictable. You can be, you don't have to be too worrying about, you know, some high level mind games, but just basically don't put it on the opponent and then as soon as they wake up, activate it. One, there's a chance that you could do what I just did there and activate it while the opponent is invincible waking up, but also, most people know that Nobara players want to instantly activate their nails as soon as they put them on, and these are actually blockable. So if the opponent wakes up and they just block as they wake up, they'll know that you're going to try and pop them as soon as they can, and they'll just block the, they'll block the pop of the nails, and that'll suck. You'll lose your damage. So you want to either do it in a kind of more unpredictable scenario, or, like I said, while the opponent is doing something. Like if I turn around and see, oh, Gojo's attacking like Yuji, my partner, 
then I can just be like, oh, that's a good time to pop it because A, he's not going to block it. And also it's going to interrupt him from attacking Yuji. So that's a perfect activation time. Another time that I like to activate them is after an opponent's recovery. So not like something like this, that string leads to a hard knockdown, but there are other things that lead to the opponent kind of flipping out. So things like this string, which the opponent just, you can really see that because of the building, but Megumi kind of like flips out because you can like jump and recover out of it. And the opponent's trying to mash the jump button to recover out of your attacks. And in that situation, they're not going to be blocking. So often that means anytime you land something like this, that launches the opponent into a recoverable state or this, you can just mash on your doll and then your resonance and they'll die. They'll take a lot of damage because they're trying to recover. They get hit by one thing, they get hit by the next, boom, boom, boom. They die very, very quickly. And finally, on the topic of applying nails and dolls, the things you do that will apply them to the opponent is going to be your regular attack string. Just mash the button or even hold down the button and trigger the whole attack string and the final hit will consume one bar of cursed energy and apply a nail. It also does a little tiny bit of damage. You can also do your first special where she does a really, really long range nail attack that you can hold down and choose who you do it against. You can do some weird air floating stuff while you choose who you want to shoot against. And then just release it. It travels pretty quick and pretty far, and it will also apply a nail. Then to apply the doll, the only thing that you can do is do your second special, which is this hammer slam. And those are the only ways that you can apply these effects. So obviously, they're what you're going to be doing most of the time. You're going to spend a lot of time going for this regular attack string. You're going to spend a lot of time, anytime you get any kind of combo, just using any opportunity you can get to go into this hammer so that you can apply the dolls. Because once you've, you know, got these dolls and these nails up, you can kill the opponents or the whole team pretty easily. And now that we've talked about her main kind of gimmick and her main game plan with the nails and the dolls, let's just talk about some more general traits of hers. Um, the first trait that you might notice when you start on a map like this with big buildings is that she has slightly less mobility and agility potential than other characters. She cannot super jump over this size of building, which, you know, other characters like Toji and Gojo can. So I thought that would be kind of universal, universal throughout the game, but yes, her movement is slightly worse. And I haven't tested this for sure, but it really feels like her sidesteps are some of the worst in the game because they are extremely slow, particularly uh, in the air. If I try to block and then dodge, it lasts a very long time in recovery. So I recommend you only really doing it when you need to really get out of the way of someone doing some kind of unblockable or something. But yeah, slightly worse than mobility, but nothing too bad, especially when you consider the fact that in a lot of her attacks, she is mobile. Like when I do my regular attack string, I can just move in any direction I want, back and forth, back and forth. I can like either close the distance in between my opponent or increase it or I can move sideways. Especially if I'm in the air, this is really handy because it makes it hard if the opponents or the other opponents attacks to accidentally run into you if you keep moving sideways, just to slightly get rid of some tracking. So that is really good. Mobility, generally, okay. Now, for the ranges that she wants to attack from. As a dedicated zoner, she's basically always gonna be attacking from mid to long range. And from mid, it's about this distance where you're kind of close to the opponent and where most of their you know, dash and attacks are going to connect are also going to be the distance that your nails will connect. Because unfortunately, these are not full screen traveling projectiles. Even from over here, they're not going to hit. So anytime you're like around this distance, don't even bother pressing the button. But around this distance where you're a little bit closer or, you know, a little bit risky, but this is where your nails are going to hit and you don't have to zoom into the opponent. So if they try to do a punch attack and you try to go for these nails because they have to do this whole like run in to do their punch, like she just does there, and you don't, your nails are often going to win. So being in this range is still quite beneficial for you, even though you are a little bit close for liking. And when you're in this range, like I mentioned, the main thing you want to be doing is using this nail attack string. It's really good, you have multiple attacks, the tracking is pretty decent, and you can like switch in between opponents while you're doing like finishing the last one to check up on what they're doing. It's very good, sometimes on weird maps and like on hills uh, over here, it will mess up the final hit, but even if you do try to get the final hit and it messes up, it only costs you one bar of curse meter, so it doesn't really matter that much. 
but yeah, really good attack string. Um, just make sure if you are completely missing the opponent, which does happen, you know, if they do, if they're running sideways or something, the tracking isn't that great. Just make sure you don't do like all three hits for no reason, because then there's a good chance that you'll get punished and hit by the other character. So just be careful of that. Just throw out one. You can really delay the hits. Like, see, that was the same attack string, but I just really delayed each hit. You can really, really slow it down. And just make sure you're not spamming it the whole time, because if you throw out all three every time, yeah, you're going to get punished. But if I just throw out one, and then, like, just see how it works. Oh, it's hitting the opponent. Let me finish it and get the nail on him. Just, just be thoughtful with it. Also, when you're in this range, your B or circle attacks will hit. So you've got this dash in hammer attack. I don't really like this one too much. I prefer to use the down version, where she does this big swing. They have just about the same range and pretty similar vertical tracking. By vertical tracking, I mean when you're in the air, how much she goes down. Actually, this one is a lot better at going down. And if I remember correctly, this one is pretty good at going up. So I guess if you're high in the air, use this one because she dashes down. Or if the opponent is above you, use this one because she will actually dash up towards them. But they kind of look similar, but lead to different things. So for example, against Megumi here, when I get this down version, I can basically always go into my doll application. That's really good. That's basically what I do every time because any opportunity you get to apply the doll is going to be good. Now I can technically do the same. Let's get you out of the corner here. I can technically do the same thing with the standing version, especially against people who like to recover because as you can see, if they recover, they will instantly get hit by it. But it's a little bit less of a true combo kind of situation and you're relying on the fact that they recover and some people just don't for some reason. And I will show you what people do if they don't recover uh, in a second. But basically what you do if that you know the opponent isn't recovering, you can just apply a nail. And if the opponent doesn't recover, that'll just be a true combo. But yeah, because the fact that off of this you actually get true combos into applying a doll, I much prefer to use that version. And it's just, yeah, really good. Also, if you have a doll already applied, you can do this other kind of weird looking combo where you do this and then actually go into the application and then go for this again. So you get to detonate a doll and add a new doll in the same combo. So that is a little, little good extra amount of damage if you've already hit the opponent with a doll. Now, the rest that she's going to do is going to be at the furthest range. So all the stuff that I was just mentioning here is what you're aiming for when you're at this mid distance. But she has two distances. She's got mid and far. And I think far is only over here. She's not really a, a Gojo or Sukuna who has these crazy specials that reach all the way across the entire screen as projectiles. She has good stuff, but they just don't go that far. So this is about the furthest distance she can get. Because if I go, oh, a little bit further, if I go over here, yeah, now they start disappearing before they hit the opponent. So the things that hit from this distance is going to be your triangle or Y button or your first special, this nail slam. They both hit from the exact same distance and they are the only things that is going to work from over here. So why would you want to use these? Well, this multi nail hit with your circle or triangle is, of course, it's so many hits. It's like eight hits or something. It's pretty good for building up your cursed energy gauge at the beginning of a round if you want to have more meter. And it's also just really good because it actually has tracking. Unlike this attack string where the nails just go straight towards the opponent, if the opponent's walking around or dashing around, these actually will home in and track in on the opponent. And pretty effectively, even if the opponent's doing some weird movement, a lot of the time it catches them. As long as they're not at like a really weird distance, like directly on top of you, like Gojo likes to be a lot of the time, which can be really annoying. But yeah, as long as you're at like a decent kind of distance and relation spatially to your opponent, this will basically always hit. And although it doesn't do any damage, if the opponent is recovering, like I mentioned, this is a good recoverable thing because you won't recover, and then you can go for a dull, and then one of these, and then, oh, they both died from that. Oops. So it's a really good way of setting up into any of your detonations, or you can just use their recovery to dash up and go for something like this, or go for a, like another hammer like this or something. But generally, yeah. Or you could also use their recovery to slam them with another one of these if they are too far away, because this does actually blast the opponent pretty far away. So if you are at a further distance, like you're not going to be able to dash up and get anything. 
So if you're all the way over here, I suggest just using one of these. But if you're a little bit closer and your other nail will still hit the opponent, may as well just apply a fresh nail. And these long distance attacks are mostly, at least in my experience, gonna be something you do as you're like going in to engage. So either at round start, where you know, you're dashing in to the other team, trying to track him down, and you like, you just get in range, then you just start already spamming these things. Cause the opponent may not expect it, that you can already hit them from over there and you just gotta start throwing things out instantly. You've got these tracking nails, you've got the nail that actually applies a nail, just start throwing them out, especially considering at the beginning of the round, this special is even cheaper and only costs you one bar instead of three. You really just gotta throw it out as much as you can and start applying all these nails early. Now, also, because these are long ranged, a lot of the time I find myself using this special or this button uh, when my opponent is getting beat up. So say I'm like attacking my opponent here, you know, I'm beating up Gojo, I'm doing fine on my own. But then I turn to the right and then I see, oh crap, Megumi's beating up and say he's closer. I'll do one of these or one of these to just whack the opponent away from beating up my teammate. And because they're long range, they're generally close enough for that to work, except for this map, because this map is pretty giant. But yeah, she has two ranges, one range where she's really good at applying the buffs, one range where she can like hit you with some things that are good at tracking, or apply the nails, and then if she's even further, she's still a threat, because at any range on the map, she can do her detonates. And if I have all these nails on the opponent, it's gonna do overall a lot of damage to both of these opponents. And uh, yeah, yikes. And from talking about those two distances, we've basically covered all of her main buttons. There are only two that are left, and that is the down triangle or Y button. This is kind of, you know, just what it looks like. It's a good crowd control button. If both of your opponents are kind of near each other, trying to do something, beat up your teammate or something, you can throw this out. Unfortunately, it is a mid-range attack, so it won't work from any of these further distances that you have to use your long-range ones. But if you are kind of close and you just don't really know what to do and you just want to blast people, you can hit them with that. And just like the regular version, like the standing version of the attack, it does put the opponent into a recoverable state. So if you are fighting a recovering enemy, then you can use that as a good way of once again going into your detonates. But yeah, I don't really find myself using it too much. The last button that we didn't talk about is her down attack, which is her joint attack chance. Unfortunately, like some characters can, but she cannot combo into her full damaging combo from this. What I mean by that is, you know, if your opponent doesn't do the joint attack chance and you try to get your own combo, some characters can complete their default combo and get a little bit of damage from it, but nobody can't. But what you can do is just go into a hammer. And to me, that's good enough. It does a little bit of damage and it applies the doll. And if, you know, my opponent's a bit of a flop or they're on the other side of the screen, you don't want to bother hoping that they're going to hit the opponent. So just mash on this hammer and apply the doll to the opponent a little bit of damage and get a lot of potential damage from any of these. And keep in mind, you know, the game is fresh, people don't really know all the mechanics. These down attacks that do the joint attack chance, they are unblockable. So if you are fighting an opponent that, you know, does try to block your, your nails on wake up, people start to kind of do that now, especially in the higher levels. If they expect that you're going to pop the nails at any point, I can just dash up and go for this and get some free damage on them because they thought that I was going to pop the doll or pop the nail. But turns out I wasn't, and now they die for it. And then I think the last thing to talk about is her relationship with her Cursed Energy Gauge and Cursed Energy Level. So she only has four bars, so not the most in the game, but she has, you know, pretty decent control over her Cursed Energy. Now, one thing that I do think is really important with Nobara is that when you are on level one, you know, the round's just started or you've just died, you want to be using this special more than you are at any other point in the game because at level one it only costs you one bar of your curse meter down there see it's only costing me that one bar of potential curse meter that i have and yeah it still applies a nail it still goes the same distance it does do a little bit less damage but that first amount of damage is not what you're aiming for with this what you're aiming for is this is just hitting the opponent from far distance and building up these nail stocks now when you get to higher levels, and she will build meter pretty quickly, even when you just do simple combos like this. Whoops. And then that again. She goes straight to level two, and even just from like a regular attack string, you'll do that as well. 
But as you can see, even when you build up to level two, this is already costing more meter. It's costing double. And when you get to level three, it's gonna cost three bars. So in my opinion, this special becomes less and less useful as you get more powerful. So you really start changing what kind of attacks you're going for. Because in my opinion, when you're at full like level three and it costs you three bars to do this, it's not really that worth it. But yeah, let's build up to level three. As you can see, she does build up pretty decent meter, even just with a regular attack string as well. Now we are at level three of our cursed meter. Not fully maxed out, but level three is the like the maximum level that you can become before getting that last little ultimate boost. Now we have all of our cursed meter, and as you can see, our specials cost more. Now this nail blast is gonna cost you three bars, and this is the point where I'm like, ugh, unless it really is the only thing you can do, you're really far from the opponent, and you're trying to interrupt them from beating up your teammate or something. That is the only time I would use this, because otherwise it's just too expensive. You may as well just really focus on trying to get this stuff to apply the nails, or, because you know, you have the cursed meters, so you want to use it. In my opinion, when you get to the higher levels, you want to just spam your hammer slam to apply the dolls. Because although it does become a little bit more expensive, it's only level 2 when you're at full meter. Um, it does start at level 1 when you're at level 1, but it doesn't all the way go up to 3 bars which is really good because that means you can use it a bunch. You can use it two times in a row before you run out of Curse Gauge. You can really just do this as much as you like, dashing around the opponent, going for things, oops, going for your things that combo into it, and just do it so many times. Just keep applying these dolls. And yeah, when you're at full max and you just keep applying these dolls constantly, it's pretty scary because you're doing a lot of damage. Not necessarily from the combos, but from what you get afterwards. But uh, yeah. That's what I recommend doing once you get to these higher cursed energy levels. And of course, when you get to full max, you have your ultimate, and ultimates in this game are unblockable. So basically, any time where the opponent, you know, recovers from a knockdown or something, unfortunately, is a close range attack, so you don't want to be too far away from the opponent, but you can just boom. It hits basically the same distance as her regular attack string. Just pop this out. If the opponent tries to block or do anything, or even if they just get hit, they'll take a huge chunk of damage. Oh, and I forgot to show, when you are at level 1, the properties of your hammer slam that applies it all changes. Now it becomes this weird kind of like grab. And even at level 2, it doesn't blast the opponent away like it does at level 3. So in this situation where you're, you know, in the same thing that applies it all, I just like to go for this. And just blast the opponent away for a hard knockdown. I can either start attacking the other opponent or just repositioning myself in the distance that I want to be. And yeah, now that I'm at level 2, it does look a little bit different where it does slightly blast the opponent away, but it does go into a recoverable state. And you know what we say about recoverable states. That's a good time to blast them with the dolls. And then once I get into level three, now it does this really big splat, particularly if the opponent is near the wall. See, he gets blasted like that, just straight down. But if he's closer to a wall, he'll get into this weird bounce, after which you can just follow up with some hammer slams to blast him away a little bit. Something pretty villainous you can do also, just to finish off your opponent, is anytime you have a doll, if you activate the doll and you are close enough, you can practically combo it into your unblockable ultimate, and the opponent will die. And just one type final tip I have for Nobara is that when you're locking onto your opponent, you know there's that little circle that goes around them to see who you're tracking onto. You can also use that uh, really kind of more than any other character in this game would, because to Nobara, when you have these things you can activate at any time, you really want to make sure you know what state the opponent is in. And you can see this thing kind of changes color as the opponent moves and gets up and stuff like that. And that is really useful to you, especially if the opponent is far away or behind a building or something. Like say I'm fighting Megumi over here and Gojo's fighting, rude, see, fighting my teammate and you know, I can't really see Gojo, he's not really on my radar because we're so far apart. I'm here trying to fight Megumi and I can see that Gojo over there has nails on him and because the ring around him is blue, I know that I can activate my nails safely because that means that he's not going to be invincible or like in any kind of knocked down state where he can't be hit. Because, you know, do keep in mind, if the opponent has been attacking them and then they're knocked down like this, see, it changes color, and that means that he's either being knocked down or he's invincible as he's waking up. And if I did my nail activation at any of those times, it'd be pretty sad because they would completely miss. The same applies with the, the dolls. If I try to activate it while the opponent is invincible, oh, he wasn't invincible there. 
they'll just completely miss and that'll really suck. So I tried to activate my nails and as you can see, nothing happened to Gojo, but Megumi got hit over here. And the same applies to Megumi, see he was knocked down there from the nail, but now that he's up, I know that I can spam <laughs> these dolls and kill him. So it's really, really good, particularly when you can't see the opponent, just to know if you can keep doing your dolls or keep doing your nails and see when they've been blasted away, because that is a very important thing to know, so you don't accidentally waste all of these important stocks that you've applied. And her passive ability is that she just gets more cursed energy when she attacks people that have nails or dolls in them. And to me, this isn't going to be too useful, or at least from my test, like, there, there's... It, it does a lot, but it's not actually that useful in my opinion. So like, say for example, I've used like a lot of this and I've, you know, added a lot of nails onto him, maybe just from my regular attacks or from this special. Because if I've done a bunch of regular attacks, there's a good chance that I've already gotten up to level two or three. Um, but yeah, so I've already got a bunch of nails on the opponent. I've been doing, or even nails and dolls. You can see that when I start to do some regular attacks, I'll build a lot of meter very very quickly i think even for my hammer swings i automatically build to full yeah it you get a lot of meter faster but because she's kind of stronger at applying these when she's at lower levels i don't really see it being too useful because i much rather use these and throw out this nail while i'm at a lower level and then yeah well, I guess it makes sense. While I'm applying these at a lower level, while they're cheaper, I have all of these nails on the opponent, and then when I get in onto them and I start attacking, pretend I'm still at level 1 here, and then I hit them, I instantly build up to level 3, and now when I detonate the nails, it'll do tons of damage. Actually, yeah, maybe that does make kind of sense. And then I also have my ultimate. Maybe that does make sense. Maybe that does make sense. So you spam nails and dolls while they're cheap, and then because you build meter really quickly, you can detonate them when they're more damaging. Okay, now let's just do a quick little little CPU battle. I'm not going to do an online battle to show off how to play Nomara. You can watch one of my separate online videos. But I feel like the online in this game is pretty volatile, either just in disconnects, but also just when you're attacking someone, random armor stuff comes up flying across the screen, interrupting what you're trying to show off. And although that is more realistic, I feel like we have a better chance of actually showing things in a little bit of a calmer situation if we're against the CPU. So, we start the round, we try to meet the opponent. Maybe I stick with Yuji here so we don't get too separated. Let me apply a nail. He's trying to attack Yuji. No, you do not. This guy is also in the way. Oh no, I missed, but I'm close enough now to land this attack string. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it weirdly glitches out and doesn't apply properly. That happened two times in a row there, that kind of sucks. But there we go, we've got that on him. Oh no, Gojo's trying to hit this guy. Get out of here. Check what's going on over here. You're too close to me, so now I can land this easily. Oh no, it messed up. Luckily, this hammer is also really safe. Oof, is that Gojo? Get a doll on. Okay, I'm already on level 3. Get out of here. Okay, he recovered, so I can activate the doll. And then the nails, and cool. Killed him, and also stopped Gojo from attacking him. He's back. Stop trying to do whatever you're doing over there. Let me try and see if I can do a... Oh! Oh, we both tried to do the same thing. Hit him with knees. Oh, he didn't recover. Ah, see, that's what I don't really like about that string. You actually have to guess if the opponent recovers or not in order to combo off of it, which is why I much rather prefer to just go for this one, which just can always go into whatever you want to go into. That was kind of a waste. I don't know why I went for the nail there. That was just kind of for fun. Oh no, not the bird. I don't know if this combos, but uh, close enough, basically. Resonance. What's Gojo up to? Get out of here. Oh, I thought the third one would have hit him in there. Okay. Now that doesn't kill him, but he's basically dead, so I'll let start attacking Gojo. Ah, damn it, he was still invincible. I didn't bother looking at him. I thought he would be up by now. Gojo, stop hitting my teammate. Okay. 
Oh no, sucked me in. The bird. There we go. He didn't recover, so I could combo into that nail. What you doing? Nice dodge. Whoa, I just got hit by some Gojo shit. Out of here. Who do we have nails on? Most people, but not this guy. And oh, if I... Oh! Did I do that? Did I kill Gojo before he killed me? Oh yeah. Resonance. It is satisfying. Hairpin! Resonance. What a satisfying way to kill the opponent. But yeah. Nobara's fun. Nobara's cool. Nobara is strong. I hope this guide helped you learn Nobara or inspired you to try her out. The game's pretty goofy, but it's pretty fun. So I'll see if we keep playing it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.